G'day everyone. Well, just about to actually embark on cleaning um, one of our mulgers, aka our King Brown snake. Um, been a fairly busy week, so it's been a few days overdue. This guy has had a slough or a shed his skin, and it's in pieces. A little bit of it still on him, which suggests that the cage is really dry, even though he's got fresh water. Cage is really dry, so I'm going to change the um, enclosure or clean out the enclosure if you like. Change the, the bedding or the substrate. Uh, give him a freshen up and hopefully that'll also help him get rid of the last little bits of skin that has re he has retained. The other reason we do this is particularly with this species of snake, they're a little bit special, the mulgers, and it's not unheard of them for them to actually eat their own skin that they've shed. So I'm going to clean it up and hopefully avoid that as well. Um, so Arthur here, our king brown snake or mulga, is going to get a clean. So I thought I'd bring you along for the ride. So under lock and key, of course, uh, this is always the fun part. Just a little bit of methylated spirits. This is a bit of hand sanitizer um, that I've been using for a couple of decades now with great success and very, very inexpensive but effective hand sanitizer. So we have a hook at the ready. And ideally, at some point, this is not our permanent home for these guys. This is sort of a grow out enclosure, if you like it. Um, we will in the next sort of 18 months to two years, hopefully not, maybe not even that long, put them into a much larger enclosure that's not at head height. Uh, this particular snake, they're pretty well behaved, but they're very food orientated. So sometimes that's not unheard of them to come out of the cage thinking that they're getting fed. They're not an aggressive snake at all. They're just very active, very food orientated. Um, and you can possibly see, I'm not sure what you can actually see, but he's right here at the edge of the cage. So keeping my hand well and truly away. Usually if they react the moment they get touched by a hook, it's just a bit of shock like that and he's not doing anything in particular other than moving but if I can get a hold of him as I say working it in the cage this high it's not always awesome and uh, he has gone into his hide so this is all sort of as it happens um, I'm dealing with cage decor so you don't put your one of the rules of thumbs with dealing with your lapids or venomous snakes is we try not to put your hand while well truly in the enclosure too far um, or past the glass thing so not dealing with an aggressive snake here, actually quite the opposite, but they are very, very active, very, and very food orientated, and really fast, because they keep them at really quite warm temperatures, um, given where they actually come from in the wild. As I say, there's a bit of cage dacre on here I'm trying to be fairly gentle with. So it never looks very pretty. I'm trying to get him out. But his head's well and truly at the other side. And I can go from one side of the enclosure to the other really fast. He's actually coming towards me now. He'll turn back as I put the hook in. Hopefully I can get a purchase on his back end. It's actually showing you sometimes the difficulties of working with venomous snakes, particularly ones that are very fast, like he is. It's the later, later part of the day, so he's pretty warm. Uh, very active. I don't like being caught. He's not an aggressive snake at all. He's nervous, still nervous. I've handled, handled this guy quite a bit. He's been to a few demonstrations, this particular animal. But he's still only young, so he's quite nervous. And it's funny, the smaller the snake they are, sometimes the more difficult they are to work with um, because they don't have as far to come back on themselves. He's put himself under his hide. As I say, he always wants to do his hide. Um, all I want to do is get him out, which I'm just doing, trying to be fairly slow, make sure I don't grab the business end. And all I want to do is get him by the tail like this. When I say the tail, I've got him by the sort of what we call the cloaca region, not the actual tail. And I've got his body well supported with the hook. And uh, I'm not sure what you can see there on the actual camera. Um, but what we do from here is you're not going to be able to see it on the camera. We don't hold them usually too long to play with them. Um, but we're going to put him in a bin, an empty bin at ground level. Get him in the bin, which he doesn't want to go in because he's way too big for that bin. And I'll show you the sort of things that happens with him. This is a great example. Had a bit of his cage decor sitting next to the bin. Look at that. He's gone straight in the cage decor. So I'm going to actually put that bit of decor in the bin with him. And hopefully he comes out of it. He likes it. It's a bit of security thing. He's actually hanging on to it. 
It's actually giving me a little bit of a buffer with him. But look at that, it's just a, a branch of gum nuts that he's on. I'll get him in there. He'll come off those. We'll get the bin lid on like that. So as I said, I had the cage decor just sitting next to the bin. He found it as he came back out of the bin. So it's literally in a garbage bin. It's locked up. These bins are actually too small. Uh, this is about a, I don't know, I think this is about an 80 litre bin. I've had for years, they're always used. But as the snakes get sort of what they're about, sort of that 60 centimetre mark now, it's actually too big. They're actually to hit the bottom and just bounce straight out. Um, so very, very uh, soon we're going to upgrade to a a wheelie bin that's much deeper 120 litre or 200 litre bin all right the boring stuff some gloves more just for it to be sanitary than anything um lapids or venomous snakes are pretty messy animals as far as the the way they defecate their feces is none like pythons pythons tend to uh, defecate a bit more like i guess a dog it's a lot more solid, easier to work with. The lapids don't work like that. Um, they're messy. They smear it everywhere, to say. So we'll get this sort of cleaned up, we'll replace some of the substrate, and we'll, we'll um, get back to you. All right, so time to put Arthur away. Uh, there's nothing very scientific about that particular clean. Um, fairly rudimentary, sort of freshen up, change the substrate, excuse me. Um, wipe the cage out, use the methylated spirits to do that. Um, it's more just as a sanitary agent. It doesn't actually clean any of the fecal matter away or anything like that. The cage was, is pretty good like that. Substrate, it sort of contained most of that stuff. But I like to always give the cage a bit of a wipe out with methylated spirits, like I said, just as a bit of a sanitizer. So we'll get Arthur away and hopefully it all goes pretty smooth. Usually does from this sort of point. Once you get him out of the bin, he's sort of settled down. All right, so I've got him now. He's still got a few bits of skin on him. You can see though, there's Arthur. Uh, we'll just try and get him back in his cage, which usually goes off fairly uneventfully. You can see he's getting some good size now. He's only still a very young snake. Uh, he means me no harm. They're a nervous snake, but still a really, really good snake to work with for the most part. Uh, probably at their most dangerous at food time because they are so food orientated. I liken them to the uh, venomous snake of the dog world. In that, if they're, your dogs are anything like our dogs, they just love their food. These guys are no different. So they're probably at their most dangerous uh, when they are uh, you know, thinking they're going to be fed or they can smell food. Right now, that's not the case. I haven't handled food. There's no food in, in, within uh, the area that's defrosting or anything like that. So there we go. That's the uh, fairly 
probably maybe even uninteresting life of a, a snake keeper on a, almost a daily basis. Not always a daily basis. We don't do this every day. Uh, try and do it possibly with a snake like this, which is quite messy, maybe once a week, I guess thereabouts. Um, so because I said they are quite messy, we're coming into the cooler parts here, uh, cooler time of the year here in Melbourne. So we won't be feeding as much, uh, which means they won't be as messy. But the venomous snakes in particular are really quite messy animals. It's one of the real pitfalls of keeping them as a, as a pet or an animal that we use for education and demonstration purposes is they are very, very messy. But these are an amazing animal. They're really, really interesting. One of the things that makes them interesting is they're usually diurnal in their habits. So unlike a lot of pythons, which are nocturnal, meaning they are um, usually active at night, these guys are active during the day. So we get to see them a lot more and see them active a lot more. So they are really interesting and one of our favorite species to keep. So there you go, the uh, cleaning of our Sudecus australis, the king brown snake, or as it's probably more aptly known, the mulga snake. Um, there you go. All right, so I think it's time for maybe a refreshment. Enjoy. Uh, hope you're all doing well. And um, yeah, look after your reptiles and be good to snakes. Take care. See you next time.